Have you ever imagined a world where things like cancer, ALS, or Huntington's disease are non-existent? What about a world where your fresh produce stays fresher longer and even tastes better? These things are possible with CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing. I've done a fair amount of research and reading on CRISPR-Cas9, and I've come to find out for myself that gene editing has benefits for everybody in the world. My goal today is to convince you that the research on and the usage of CRISPR-Cas9 must continue for the remarkable benefits that it has for everybody in the world. And specifically, I'm going to identify those benefits in the health science and the agricultural fields. I will also identify the opposing viewpoint, or in other words, the viewpoint that is against gene editing. Before I present to you exactly how CRISPR is going to bring us these amazing benefits, I'm going to teach you a little bit about what exactly CRISPR-Cas9 is. CRISPR-Cas9 is actually an acronym that stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats CRISPR-Associated Protein 9. That's quite a mouthful, so it's just referred to CRISPR for obvious reasons. So it's a gene editing tool. And it's also an enzyme that scientists have been able to extract from actually bacteria's natural defenses from viruses and use to send into human genes or plant genes to cut out specific parts of genes that they want to eliminate and replace with a better gene. It was discovered in 2012 as part of the bacteria's defense system against viruses. And according to the CRISPR guide from The Wire, CRISPR is a, quote, revolutionary new class of molecular tools that scientists can use to precisely target and cut out any kind of genetic material. CRISPR is often referred to as a pair of molecular scissors that is capable of cutting out specific strands of DNA. Now that you know a little bit about what CRISPR can do, it's time to learn why its use and research should continue to go forward. CRISPR has the potential to inhibit or even eradicate many diseases. According to cancer.org, 9.5 million people around the world die every year from cancer. The World Health Organization says that 39 million people worldwide are affected by blindness. In addition, there's still no cure for Huntington's disease, but these ailments and more may be cured by CRISPR. Let's talk about CRISPR and Huntington's disease. Huntington's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder that usually isn't diagnosed until later on in life, but there is such thing as juvenile Huntington's disease. Since there's no cure for it, the person with it will eventually die from it, and the symptoms that they will experience before this are tripping, difficulty speaking, difficulty swallowing, muscle weakness, involuntary movements, mood disorders, and more. But with CRISPR, scientists may be able to target the MHTT gene, which is the gene that causes Huntington's disease. The tests that scientists are running now are usually done in mice or in lab rats. This is critical for the progression of CRISPR-Cas9 because by using these lab animals, scientists will be able to figure out treatments that they can take from the animal and then use in humans. What about CRISPR in cancer? Recently, an Australian scientist was able to completely wipe out the cancer in a mouse that was caused by HPV. And of course we know that humans can get cancer from HPV. But this was just one scenario. Think of the possibilities if CRISPR is, will progress enough to be able to defeat all types of cancers. Think about the families that will be able to stay together longer if their loved one can live longer fighting off this disease with the use of CRISPR. What about CRISPR and blindness? There is a form of blindness called Leber vision loss that a patient in Oregon has, and this patient was recently treated with CRISPR to try and 
um, correct their vision loss. Scientists aren't sure quite yet how the CRISPR will affect their vision or if it will completely bring back this person's vision, but through continuing researching and testing and um, using CRISPR on patients, we'll be able to find out just what CRISPR can do for people with blindness and other diseases like I mentioned. Although treating illness in humans is the main goal of CRISPR, it has also been applied to the agricultural industry, which actually might have a bigger effect on you than you know. CRISPR can affect you personally by genetically enhancing the very food that you buy. And it also helps the agricultural business, right? <laughs> so most, if not all, of your food comes from a farm, or at least the ingredients that are in your food. Here are some ways that the usage of CRISPR gene editing can enhance the foods that you eat. Tomatoes can be edited, genetically edited, to grow larger, be resistant to bacteria, and also have more vitamin C. Rice has been edited to have a greater yield so that farmers can produce more for us, especially since rice is a worldwide staple for many cultures, and also the farmers will benefit from having a greater yield. Citrus fruits. These can be edited to be resistant to the greening disease, which is where they become green. I'm sure you've seen this once or twice because of the bacterial infection. What about chocolate? CRISPR can actually be used to make the trees that produce the cacao beans resistant to infection so that we have more chocolate. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> and then my last one is wheat. As we know, wheat contains gluten and people that have celiac disease cannot eat gluten because it makes their stomach hurt really bad, among other things. So, researchers are using CRISPR to potentially decrease the amounts of gluten found in wheat so that people with celiac and gluten sensitive enteropathies can eat um, more of the foods that they want. Hopefully it's clear to you why we need CRISPR for enhancing the health of humans and also plants. However, there are some people that are opposed to CRISPR for a few reasons. They're opposed to it because it's tested in animals and that scientists might abuse their power with it by, quote, playing God. And people are concerned about somatic versus germline editing. On the topic of animals as test subjects, a professor at North Carolina State University said that animals' rights are violated when they're used in research because they're not given a choice and animal testing is morally wrong no matter how much humans may benefit. I respect this professor's opinion, however, I completely disagree with what he says. I think that animals that are used in the lab to find treatments to cure cancer or Huntington's disease or blindness is amazing and it's a gift to us because we'll able, be able to find cures for these diseases that so many people suffer from around the world. In addition, there's also a, been a call from scientists around the world to regulate germline editing as much as somatic editing has been regulated. Germline editing means that that genetic editing will affect the offspring of the person, whereas somatic editing means that it just affects that person, but it won't affect their DNA or the DNA of their offspring. Scientists are not completely sure how germline editing will affect the person's offspring quite yet. So there's just some debate there as to how far scientists should go in the germline editing department. And lastly, many people claim that organic produce is so much better than conventional produce, or in other words, non-organic. Well, as it turns out, there was a study done recently in the Annals of Internal Medicine that claimed that there's insufficient evidence to prove that organic produce is better for you than non-organic. I hope by now you understand how CRISPR works and why it's, it is essential not only for people with diseases, but also for you as a consumer in society. By continuing the research and usage of CRISPR, 
Scientists will be able to find a cure to cancer, Huntington's disease, and more, and also create good crops. There is still a lot to learn about what CRISPR can do, but right now we have enough information to propel us down the right road that will lead us to an ideal world, free from disease and full of the best foods to fuel us.